Hi, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the basics of setting up a discussion board in your Blackboard Learn course shell. So what you need to do first is log into Blackboard and when you do, you're going to go ahead and arrive at this screen. You'll see a list of all the different courses that you're an instructor for. Now for today's purposes, I'm going to go ahead and select a course that's already finished. So I'll pick my composition class from this past fall semester. So that way we can use that as our sandbox to play around in and I won't monkey things up for my current students. So what you do is then you click the course that you want to go ahead and add the discussion to. So click on the link and it's going to go ahead and bring you to this screen. You should be able to go ahead and follow along with me uh, and, and look exactly like yours. Okay. Now there are a few things I want to orient you to as we get started. First, make sure the edit mode is turned on. You'll know it's on because it says it and has a green light. It will, when you arrive in your shell, that should be on, but just double check that. Second, there's an important piece and I frequently would forget. It's in the upper left corner here. It's a little circle with a uh, plus sign in it. That's an important tool for adding different tools to your course, all right? Another important piece you're gonna wanna be familiar with, this little circle here. Right, that allows you to see your course from the student's perspective. So you can kind of proof your work to make sure that the tools you think you've added have in fact shown up uh, where the students are gonna see them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go down to our course tools and we need to select the discussion board. So scroll down on the left-hand side here, you can follow my mouse, and you're gonna see course tools. Click on the arrow and you're gonna see a whole list of different options become available. Scroll down, and you'll see discussion board right here. So click on that link. When you do, it's gonna bring you to this page right here. So I have no idea what these numbers mean, but that's not important. That's your discussion board. You click on that link and it will bring you to a very empty forum. Now forums are useful because think of them like the shelves where certain conversations will take place, all right? I like to organize, organize them either by book as an English professor or by topic as a writing professor, right? I may also want to organize them by week. And that's really useful st for students because they can think to themselves, hey, it's um, you know March 22nd. They know exactly which discussion they should be engaged in at, on that given day. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a forum, all right? So here's the create forum button, which we'll click. And then what you need to do is you need to figure out what is this forum going to do. Now there's one forum that I like to make and it's called study hall. Study hall is going to be a place where students can talk to one another, ask each other questions, share useful links and information. And it's an area that you don't have to monitor. Students should know that if they have a question for you or something that they want to share with you, email is the best way to be in touch with their professors. So this is some place that I'll drop in every now and again, just to make sure it's not gone wild. Um, but it's a good place for students just to engage with one another. So in this text box, box you wanna go ahead and provide a description of what sort of activities take place here, what your general expectations are for behavior uh, and performance. So this is a place for student engagement. Students can ask, each other questions and share resources. Faculty will occasionally monitor but not participate in this forum. Faculty questions are best handled through email. And there you go. See, one of the key rules to an online presence is that students have to see you present in the discussions. Otherwise, they may not be as regularly engaged. However, students who have questions for you need answers quickly. So that's why I always recommend putting a statement in here that email is the best way to, to handle that. Once you've provided the description for your forum, scroll down to the submit button, all right, and you can hit submit. <clears throat> now, worth noting, there are some other fields here. You want to make it available right away. 
you don't need to go ahead and roll this out because this is an, a study hall space for students to access at any time. We'll discuss how these can be used a little bit. Standard view is, is preferable and it's a non-graded space. This is just some place where they can engage one another. So at this point, I generally leave all of this alone and then I click submit. And once I've done that, you're gonna see that the study hall forum shows up in the discussion board. Now, this isn't the only kind of forum that you're gonna to wanna to have on your boards. So for example, you're gonna to wanna to create one for the upcoming week. So Monday is March 23rd. And so what I'll do is in this name of the forum, I'll write March 23rd through 28th, plan for success. Now, this is a forum that I created for my English 096 Intro to College English students. And so what I ended up doing is having them describe what their workspace is gonna look like. So in the text box, I post the directions for the assignment. So I might type something to the effect of, um, write a paragraph description about your new study space where you will engage in remote learning. Be sure to watch the video posted in the class announcements before you start this response. Okay, so I've given the students directions um, and they understand what they need to reply to once they, you know, are going to engage in this discussion. Now, I may also include some other directions, such as after creating your own thread and posting your initial response, you must also reply to at least two of your classmates providing feedback on their writing. Note either paragraph organization development or sentence clarity issues. This way, my students know that it's more than just saying something, it's about responding to one another. It's not the same as being in person, but it does provide an opportunity for students to engage in some form of discussion. Once you're satisfied with the description of your discussion forum, you can scroll down further to some of these other characteristics we talked about. Now, what I may say then is, I don't want this to display until the 23rd. This is really useful for when you wanna create multiple forums at once, but you don't want students jumping too far ahead in their work, okay? So I may go ahead and, and withhold the, the um, display. Now for this purpose, I'm gonna not put a display after date on there because I'd like you to be able to see the forum after we created it. Because if you do that restriction, you won't see it until that specific date. As I scroll down further, you can have one of two options. You can choose standard view, which means you can go right into the forum and see what other people posted. Or you can select this second option, where participants have to create a thread and post their responses before they can look at others. Now this can be useful if you're finding that a lot of students are just copying one another. So instead, you might select this option and it forces them to provide their own original response before they can see how other people have responded to the prompt. Given that this is our students' first time engaging in class discussions, I'm gonna keep with the standard view so that I don't make it any more difficult for them. Now that said, I may wanna grade this assignment. So in that case, I'm gonna grade the discussion forum, which means I'm gonna be able to grade every single one of the students' threads in Blackboard. Now, if Blackboard's pretty unfamiliar to you, I would recommend not to worry about grading the threads within Blackboard, because you can simply look and see who participated and grade on your own. And that's really the most simple and easiest way to do it. But for users who are a little bit more comfortable with Blackboard and have grade books worked into the Blackboard system, this is a good option for you. I generally leave the alignments alone Subscriptions simply means that students can get, you know, emailed updates of, over who's posting the threads or not. One thing I do recommend, do not check allowing anonymous posts. Make students own their comments. Additionally, 
I generally tend not to allow students to delete their posts or to edit their own posts. And the reason for this is that if we're supposed to respond to what they've posted and then they change what they posted, it can lead to a really confusing online discussion. Students can always go ahead and post a response to their own thread, clarifying their position if they feel like they didn't do as good a job as they wanted to initially. And generally, that's about it. So at this point, once you have your forum all set, click Submit. And when you do, your forum has been created. And students can now see your forums and go in there and participate. So let's go see how that works. Let's click on March 23rd, 28th Plan for Success. And that's going to bring us right into the forum. So students are going to have to go ahead and create a thread. And you can do this too. And again, I highly encourage you to participate in your discussions. If students don't see you participate in the discussions and responding to what they write, they won't participate. Generally speaking, I, would, I always try to aim for at least five responses over the course of a given you know, week's discussion. I don't have to reply to everybody, but I want them to see that I'm actively engaged too. I'm modeling the behavior that I want them to demonstrate. So we create a thread, and when you do that, you're gonna see the description of the assignment posted again. So students will be able to look at that, you know, as they create their response. So for the subject, you know, you wanna put, you know, I usually put like, you know, um, Forrest's post, you know, something to let people reading the thread know that it's for me. Now, if it's something that, you know, you want the students to read, I'll frequently, you know, put must read, uh, you know, teacher feedback, something like that. And that way when students see that thread amidst all of the others in the forum, it kind of catches their attention. So I might say, uh, students, I'm noticing many of you are not proofreading, you're writing. Please check before posting. Whatever it is that you wanna post in your thread, you can go ahead and type that right in there. And then when you're satisfied, scroll down, click submit and your thread will post and you can see it right here and it tells you the title of the thread tells you who the author was this is also nice because it tells you what sort of activities involved with the posts generally speaking i'll tend to go into posts that have little activity and that's where i'll provide some feedback now the last piece i want to go over with you briefly is how to go ahead and reply to a, a post so again you click on a post and you're gonna see you have these options. You can reply, you can quote. Now, as a faculty member, you will have the opportunity to edit other students' threads. They will not have this option. Same with delete. So what I might do is I'm gonna reply, I'll click that button, and I have the same text box below crop up. So I might add an additional note. So please write your posts on time. Again, whatever it is that you want to provide the reply to, you can type that in there, click submit, and there you go. So at this point, you've created your discussion board, you have a study hall forum, and you have at least the first of many different discussion forums created. But what you're going to notice is if you click on the student view button, all that hard work and you can't see it. This is why the student view is really helpful to proof your work. Nowhere in here can you access the discussion board, which means this is not ready for students to go and participate with just yet. So to leave student view, upper right corner, and you click exit preview. Delete any user preview data. And then you're back into your familiar editor mode. Now what you wanna do is go back to that circle I mentioned with a little plus sign in it right here. And you're gonna pick tool link. I like to call it weekly discussions. You can call it the discussion board. Whatever you wanna do is fine. Then under type, you're gonna scroll down and select discussion board. This is gonna tell the computer to pull that discussion board you created out of the back and put it up front for student use. Then lastly, Click on available to all users and hit submit. Now you'll notice the discussion board link shows up and this is the space where your students can access it. 
I like to push this all the way up near the top so they can more readily see it. So let's go back to student view and check our work to make sure it came out okay. When you do that, this is exactly the view that your students are gonna see. And sure enough, there it is. When they click on discussion board, it's gonna bring them right to the boards where your different forums are located and they can participate in the forums just like you'd like them to do. So I hope that this helps provide you with some feedback in terms of how to create a discussion board, how to create the different forums, creating threads, and creating replies in your discussions. I've also included a how-to for students as well, so feel free to share that with your students uh, to help them navigate the, um, the class discussion boards here on Blackboard Learn. Thanks a lot, and best of luck moving ahead with the, uh, with the new transition into Blackboard and online remote learning.